Uh, so this is just a um, very brief um, overview of some of the things that we've been doing in Research Vocabularies Australia over the last um, six months or so. Um, and uh, perhaps some of you have actually be seen some of this already. Um, uh, just to put a bit of spin on it, I guess, and to <laughs> maybe um, talk about some of the things that we like. Um, and put a bit of work into to, to make uh, the system better for our users. So uh, just these uh, four points so far, um, and then anything else that you want to know about, you can ask Joel. <laughs> uh, so um, work on the GCMD science keywords and our republication of those uh, in Research Vocabulary of Australia. Um, a little uh, tweaking to the linked data API, also known as SysVoc, uh, that we've done for our for our service, um, a subscription notification system, which we really like you all to use, um, and the registry API, which is uh, perhaps not for everybody, but if you want to do interesting things, uh, it's a means uh, to do that, uh, to take advantage of the vocabularies that are in RBA. Uh, so first, uh, GCMD science keywords. Um, we are a long time a consumer of the uh, NASA GCMD science keywords. Uh, and we have had a uh, version of the science keywords uh, published on RVA for some time. Uh, we wanted to do that a little bit more systematically and to uh, republish them in a way that it's easy for uh, our users to consume, uh, reuse, repurpose. And so that's what we've done here. Uh, I'm happy to admit a certain naivety on my part in terms of just getting my head around what on earth these keywords are and how they work and the different um, vocabularies. Um, there are, depending on how you count them, 11 or 12. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, let's say there, there are 11 vocabularies that you'll see uh, in RBA, plus a 12th one that, uh, that I put together that combines all of the rest. So uh, you can uh, make use of that in the vocabulary widget. Um, you can search for these things in RBA and get a list of them uh, through the API. We'll see an example of that later. Um, we've added a few triples into the RDF uh, to support the vocabulary widget, in which you're free to either uh, to use yourself <laughs> or ignore, up to you. Um, and uh, because it's published through RBA, it's available through all the usual uh, types of endpoints. So just a straight download and uh, through the usual RDF formats, uh, RDF XML, Turtle, etc. Um, Sparkle endpoint for Sparkle queries and through the Linked Data API, aka SysVolk. And uh, we've committed to um, republishing uh, versions as they come out. Uh, the, the What I would call major releases, but they're in a sense dot releases um, uh, from, uh, from the NASA people. I think we're currently on 8.6. Um, the version numbering is um, interesting in the sense that there are these minor version numbers, um, 8.6 and so on, that come out once a year, but then there are monthly, well, actually more than monthly updates. They make updates um, from time to time, and then there's a monthly um, uh, document that's put out so that summarizes what's happened in the last month. Um, so we look for your feedback as to uh, whether you need um, those intermediate versions to be available, or whether you're happy to um, uh, just make use of the latest dot release, which is which is a major release that comes out every year. Uh, so uh, we have some documentation. That page that's in the, the URL there, it's in the presentation. Ah, yes, and um, we will, uh, of course, this presentation will be available, and so you can click on the links and follow that. Um, so we do have some documentation on our documentation site. Um, looks like this in RVA. Uh, well, at least the first bit of it. Um, just if you just search for GCMD, you will find those vocabularies. And here's one of them, and usual RBA format um, with the uh, the version uh, shown in the left hand uh, pane and the various download and other endpoint options there. Um, so this is a start, in a sense, of the republication of these uh, these new versions. So there's only one there. Um, Will, will be added as, as the GCMD team put out uh, more stuff. Um, so we did, we did put out something about this in the 
uh, in the most recent ARDC um, newsletter email, um, what perhaps wasn't quite so obvious, <laughs> I think got a bit buried. Um, um, we'll, but we will we will put this out again through the other, some of the other uh, notification channels as well. Uh, linked data API. This is um, a case where um, the off-the-shelf functionality we we had made available, but it wasn't working so well. So we we uh, decided just to hide the functionality um, until we could make it work well. And so we've now made it work well. Um, and it's to do with uh, some of the filtering capabilities. So the HTML uh, pages that you get through the link, through Sysfoc, the Link Data API, um, are quite good already. They let you do all sorts of filtering, um, but there was a certain <clears throat> filtering that wasn't working, but it is now. Uh, and you'll see that here in an example where there are uh, dates and these dates will come through in vocabularies that, that um, um, our users have published uh, out of the pool party project, um, but also do appear in other projects as well. Um, so dates that are marked as dates. Um, oh, do you, do you actually see my mouse as I, as I, as I move it? You do okay. So if I okay, so if I just okay, so these um, less than greater than signs are filters, uh, and they weren't working, but they are now. So uh, let's do an example. If I click on this greater than sign, um, okay, my mouse is not. You're not seeing where I'm pointing with the mouse at actually at the moment. Never mind. Um, click on the one that I've got an arrow. <laughs> Um, pointing at, uh, and that will filter to the concepts that have a, a, a created time greater than or equal to that time. So do that, and um, the list is now uh, filtered to those concepts, and and um, the icons now change to show that you see the the green background of that. So, so there's a there's a reversion, and you can also um, keep going. So you can keep stepping through and find concepts um, greater than other values that are shown there. Um, so that's that's nice. You can see how it's a nice way of navigating vocabulary to see how um, concepts have evolved over time, you know, the descriptions or whatever has changed. Um, next is subscription notification system. Um, it's a tiny little button on the screen, which I'll show you, um, but there's a lot happening under the hood. Uh, so in response to um, user request, we, we have a, a means of uh, subscribing to uh, vocabularies, either individual vocabularies or all the vocabularies um, published by a particular organisation, or all vocabularies in the system, uh, and also means of subscribing to um, updates about the servers. And if you subscribe, you get a customised for you um, email every week uh, with with your notifications. And there's an interface for managing your subscriptions. So there's the <laughs> there's a tiny little button. Um, uh, on one of the pages. That's what it's. Uh, that's what that's about. And if you click that, you get a little dialog pop, pops up, and you can select whether you want to subscribe just to that vocabulary or um, from that uh, from the, the publisher, specifically the owner of that vocabulary, um, or all vocabularies. And you can subscri subscribe to three individual vocabularies or some combination of owners. It's very flexible. Uh, and you also have the opportunity to um, uh, subscribe there. There's a checkbox for system updates, service updates. And all you have to do is put in an email address and you will start receiving notifications. Um, and they go out, um, I think, either Wednesday or Thursday mornings. Wednesday, Wednesday mornings. And that, that service is available both on our, our main production server and on our demo server. Here's a, uh, a sample, uh, one of the emails that comes out every week. I'm going to have time. Oh, heaps, heaps. Okay. Uh, I, will, I will zoom in on this in a sec. Just, this is just uh, an overview of one of the more interesting emails that, that uh, came out. This is showing my subscriptions. Um, it's, it's both an HTML and a plain text email. So if your mail reader is somewhat degraded, you will still be able to read it. 
um, where, we, where we can put in links, hyperlinks to vocabularies, um, they are included, so you can click on the vocabulary and go straight to it. Uh, and there's another link at the bottom to manage your subscriptions. Uh, so let's just zoom in on this one so we can see a bit more clearly. Um, for each vocabulary that you get any notification about, um, you see which versions have been, uh, what are the new versions, uh, what versions have been, if any, have been deleted, um, and where there's been an update to a version, you can, you know, it shows you which of the fields has been updated. Um, not very exciting, but it can get exciting <laughs> if um, somebody's done something interesting there. Uh, and if you, of course, if you have subscribed to notifications for, from a particular owner, then you get notifications about new vocabularies as well. Uh, the manage subscriptions uh, page. So if you if you do click on the link at the bottom of the page, manage the subscription preferences, you get a, a page that looks like this, and it shows you a list of check boxes that are your subscriptions. And then you just check what you want to unsubscribe to, and then click the button, and you're unsubscribed. Very straightforward. Um, so that's all um, sort of user focus um, in terms of the portal. Uh, through the back end, uh, through the registry, we now have um, a public, publicly accessible registry API. So this was a major, major, major um, effort uh, to separate the front end and back end of the system uh, and to very strictly um, keep that separation so that all the, the main functionality is, is is in the registry and the portal um, makes calls to a registry API. Um, so we have quite a lot of documentation about this now. It's, a, it's an API for the metadata catalog. So um, we know that <laughs> certain, um, uh, certain people want more, want more and more and more, and that's fine. Um, in particular, APIs to access vocabulary data. Uh, and um, that's on the list of things. Um, but this is this is particularly an API for the metadata catalog. So um, the list of vocabularies that's that's it, that's in RBA, uh, getting access to titles, descriptions, notes, etc., and list of versions and their status and so on. Um, the documentation will take you through what's uh, available, um, but in particular, we uh, just I'll. Um, show you a slide of the Swag user interface, which is a really nice, convenient way of just getting started with it. Uh, and then uh, the presentation also has a link to um, just a um, reasonably straightforward example um, of one, one way of using, using it, but there are many others. So lots of, lots of documentation pages on our documentation site, um, sort of a getting started high level intro, um, description of the, of the model entities that are in there, um, how, you, how you access it, different means of accessing the API, um, details of particular methods, and we have a page of some sample workflows. So just an examples, if you like a, a cookbook, um, to help you to get started with it. Um, here's the Swag user interface. Um, just, it's a very convenient, I use it myself all the time. Uh, very quick way of interacting with particular API methods. Um, and that's actually generated from, the, from the, uh, the definition of the API methods. That's very nice. Um, and with, uh, the link in the, in the um, presentation is to um, a JS Fiddle. Uh, don't know if you're, familiar, if, if, well, in case you're not familiar with JS Fiddle, let me tell you what it's about. It's a means of um, very easily, well, if you know JavaScript and HTML, um, prototyping little bits and pieces of user interface. Uh, and uh, my colleague, wonderful colleague Joel has done this little one. And um, simple little example, um, uh, little drop down list where we have uh, used the API search method to um, uh, get a list of vocabularies out of uh, RBA that are published by GA, I think. Um, and then when you make a selection, uh, you will get uh, the vocabulary widget and list of concepts there. And if that's hierarchical, then you get the usual vocabulary widget um, means of expanding um, the next level and so on. So there, it's a very brief intro to the API and examples there. Um, we welcome your feedback and uh, please do get in touch um, for uh, 
uh, new features and anything you like, like, don't like, we love to hear things that you like. Um, that's always good. Um, but uh, anyway, do get in touch and that's the, the standard services um, email, getting in touch with us. And that is it.